Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we'll be taking a look at the shading in Kubler Cubed. So when you first load a project in Kubler Cubed you, you'll, you'll notice that it says shaded. The default colors are for the existing to be shaded in black and white and the proposed to be shaded with a classic sort of cut and fill map showing the differences. Um, this all these colors can be edited and you can also change the way in which the proposed is displayed. So I'll just go through where you can find the items needed for editing um, those options. On the left you've got your color keys which shows um, the current color tables which are being used to shade the existing and proposed. So the existing is on the left and the proposed is on the right. And it will also tell you in regard to the proposed whether it's shading levels or differences. So that's quite important. Differences will be shading um, the difference between the existing and proposed levels, whereas, um, and the alternative to, is to show, shade the elevations. With existing, always the elevations are shaded. And so we'll go through the different modes, and they can be selected down here on the uh, right in the display panel. So the first one is the default, which is to shade the earthworks differences. Um, the next is to shade the earthworks levels. Um, with a different color table to the existing and the final one is to shade the the earthworks levels but with the same color table as the existing uh, so that's useful for telling you the proposed relative to the existing um, so we'll just flip between them so the the middle one is shading earthworks levels with a separate color table to the um, to the existing and you can see the two color tables here terrain levels proposed levels and then we'll switch on to the last one which will shade the proposed levels the same as the existing. So to edit these color tables we use the shading menu and you can see that the options correspond to the different display modes so we can either shade the existing levels, earthworks differences or earthworks levels. So we'll click on earthworks differences. Once in here you can also change which um, shading scheme that you're changing with these tabs at the top. So the layout of this form has the color table in use here and on the right hand side it has the way that they, that color table is applied to the surface. So if you want there is a list of sort of pre-installed uh, color tables that you can select so you can quickly just change to a uh, rainbow or any of the other defaults that are in there and just click apply and that will apply to your surface. Uh, this rainbow one could be useful if you want to have a different more more differences between the visualization rather than just red and blue red and blue and it can allow you to see more detail in your um, site. Um, so I'll go through some of the options on the right hand side here. Um, you can choose to dis shade the colors discreetly, like in blocks. Um, you can see that effect on this, this table here, or blended. Uh, but you can see on the site plan behind that it's shading blended and then discreetly. One thing to mention is this uh, table on the side. This will, this will show you the color table on the left and how it's mapping to the proposed or no sorry the cu current surface that's being shaded so in this case we're we're doing earthworks differences which is shading the pr proposed so shows that it's mapping how that's mapping to the proposed surface this is quite relevant when you're you're changing this option here which is related to how the the uh, color table is mapped so you can either have it mapped relatively which will stretch the color table across the entire surface which is the default or you can you can do it explicitly so you can if you select absolute the values here explicitly map to the values on the surface um, this is useful sometimes if you want if you had a, have a defined color table and you want it to be mapped you want more control over how it's mapped onto the surface how each color is mapped onto the surface you can see here that this color table ranges between 100 and minus 100 but because the current surface has a much smaller range um, it's only going to be using that small section in the middle so it's probably not that appropriate for this one to be used for shading that you could either choose to edit the uh, these values but in this case it would be much easier just to go into 
a relative shading scheme. The other option is zero lock. So this locks, this is an option only available in the relative shading when the color table is stretched across the entire surface. Um, when you do that, you can choose to lock zero from the color table to zero on the surface. So this is relevant if you've got a cut and fill shading because you, you want the shading to be between a minus and positive. Or if, for instance, on the existing terrain, you want to shade the differences between um, land and sea, and you know that zero is the sea level, then you can select a color table and use relative shading and lock zero, and it will lock the zero color to zero on the surface, but the rest of the color table will be still be stretched across the surface. So briefly, we'll go into editing color tables. Um, you can either e edit the current one using the edit here, or you can create a new one with the edit copy button. So when, when creating a new sh color table, it's always best to try and select one that is close to what you want. So you have to do the least amount of editing of, of the table. So we'll say for Earthworks differences if we wanted something slightly different to cut and fill. So we'll select the default for differences. And we want, want, want something similar, but we want rather than, than shading between red and blue, we want it to shade between, say, uh, red and green. So we'll edit a copy of this table, give it a new name. And we'll just edit these colors here. And I'll just do this quickly as a demonstration. save that one and then click OK to apply it and you'll see that new uh, color table that we just created has been applied to the, the proposed surface and the color key here is updated with the new color table that we just created. Um, so I hope that's useful to you and shows that you can shade the proposed and existing in any colors that you want using a number of different tools for either stretching the color table across the whole range of the surface or explicitly defining which, which stops you want the colors at. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to post in the comments or we're always happy to answer emails at support at